This episode of the Rogue Deck Builder is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, the number one source for games and gaming accessories, and by GatheringMagic.com, the number one source for Magic the Gathering news and articles. Hi there, it's Kevin with Gathering Magic and RogueDeckBuilder.com here with another episode of the Rogue Deck Builder. This month I'm going to be focusing on submissions that have been submitted to the Rogue Deck of the Month in November. And I'm going to be playing a few of these decks, kind of the, the more creative ones, the ones that, that caught my eye, and see how well they perform. This deck, particular deck, I don't know if it's going to actually be able to hold its own against the field. I have made my own changes to it, so it's not the list that was originally submitted. Let's see who... Uh, this one was by Ryan Inzana, and uh, it is revolves around Volta Riggs. So let's just go over his list, and then I'll show you the changes that I made. He has four High Priests of Penance, four Viscopa Guild Mages, four Boros Reckoners, and four Volta Riggs. Uh, I don't like the Viscopa Guild Mages. He's using them to give his guys lifelink, but I think it's way too clunky, especially if they're going to die too easily to Viscopa Guild Mage. So I decided to not go that route. Uh, and then I think I, I'm only running 12 creatures. So yeah, so I'm just running High Priest, Boros Reckoner, and Volatile Rig. Then we have on the ways to kill the Volatile Rig, he's got the Bubbling Cauldron and Trading Post. And then he's got some removal in here with the Celestial Flares and Doom Blades. I'm definitely okay with that, but I, I, I'll I show you what I'm running instead. And then three Wreath of Bones to scry through his deck, three Whip of Erebuses, and three Gifts of Gift of Orzovas. I don't like the Gift of Orzovas. I think they are way too clunky in this list. And so I did take them out. And then he's just running the four Temple of Science and four Godless Shrines. His sideboard is just your typical anti. They got the Celestial Fair for the Hexproof decks. Got the Ultimate Prices for both Mono Blue and Mono Black. Got Doom Blades in here for anything besides Mono Black. Four Sin Collectors in for the Esper build, I'm sure. And two Glare of Heresies of, uh, also to kill Chain of the Rocks and the uh, Elspeth Detention Spheres. The very good card right now. And then two Dark Betrayals against that Mono Black li list. So his ba let's just go over his description here. It says, this deck revolves around Volta Rig. It's a 4-4 Trampler for 4 that attacks each turn if possible. Getting for 4 damage each turn and presenting your opponent with a risky decision to block. If the rig blows, it's a potential board wipe, dealing 4 damage to each creature and each player. So don't have to worry much about damage based sacrificial destroy removal. We have a number of cards that take advantage of Rig's downside. We've got the Reckoner that deals 4 damage, uh, which will also deal 4 damage to any target. Hyper Dependence, which destroys a permanent. And so that can take care of pesky enchantments, artifacts, or planeswalkers. We also have many cards that can grant the Rig life lifelinks, such as Whip, Gift Orzova, and Viscopa Guild Mage. I messed around with that a bit. This can create a huge swings in life or steal the game. Uh, if you also happen to use Guild Mage second ability, uh, still the game. If you also happen to use Guild Mage second ability, okay, that's why he's got the Guild Mage. Whenever you gain life, uh, deals that much damage as well. But I don't know. I just don't think I don't see them uh, enough upsides upsides to actually playing this Copa Guild Mage in here. I think it will die too easily. Anyway, uh, f got Read the Bones and the Temple to dig out to find our key creatures. And it says that the deck can function without the rig. And yeah, so I just thought I would I would expand upon this. It's it's pretty good uh, little build here. Let's go over what I've made changes. So instead of the the Doom Blades, I think Heroes Downfall is a lot better in this deck. It can d kill anything in the format, especially Planeswalkers, Jace Architect of Thoughts, a, a bit of a pain in the butt. It can kill... It can ki like I said, it can kill anything that is also black, which Mono Black is a huge deck, especially here on Magic the Gathering Online. And yeah, so anyway, so the ma my main change is I thought, why not? If we're running this Bubbling Cauldron Trading Post combo, let's have our finisher actually be Angelic Accord. Once you drop Angelic Accord, a lot of times this, you can gain so much life on both your turn and your opponent's turn that it becomes out of hand. And another little tech that I thought I'd bring in is Gift of Immortality. Gift of Immortality is awesome on either Reckoner, Volatile Rig, or High Priest of Penance. And then I thought that and I, I want another way to gain 4 life for Angel Accord besides Bubbling Cauldron and Trading Post. So that's what I brought in the War Leader's Helixes. Uh, you could go the 6-1 uh, Trample Lifelink guy. And I'm sure there's a few other car key cards you could go that could gain 4 life. And anyway, so I, I cut down to two Whip of Erebuses. I also thought that Farika's Cures were much better 
They help us. I think our worst matchup is going to be the fast red or green decks. So I've got the Freakas Cures in here to take care of early Elvish Mystics or early things like uh, Ash Zealots and whatnot. And the coolest thing about this is you have to use it on your own High Priest of Penance or your Volatile Rig or your Boros Reckoner. It is a way to you know, deal damage to it. And then, yeah. So, uh, especially for Gus Cure with High Priest of Penance, a lot of times you're stuck with no ways to actually deal, uh, get this High Priest of Penance damage, and that is that is definitely a way to do so. Uh, I think the two of Erebos is enough. I'm not quite sure. We'll mess around with that because it is giving our creatures lifelink, which might be better than, say, more trading posts. But I am running a four trading posts. I think I think four bubbling cauldrons is too much. Uh, we don't have enough creatures to actually make it worthwhile. I mean, the trading post bubbling cauldron combo is awesome when you get them both out. But I think that I think that this is fine going four trading posts and two bubbling cauldrons. And then also any th other changes I made. Well, of course now I'm playing the expensive land package, so we're we're running. How'd those lands get over there? We're running uh, only four basic lands, Swamp, Swamp, Plains, Plains, so Burning Earth could be a problem. I do have a Wear Tear in the sideboard, and the Hyper's of Penance is a way to get rid of it. Uh, I also have, so I'm running four Sacred Foundries, four Blood Crypts, four Godless Shrines, and eight, uh, four Temple Signs and Temple Triumphs. So hopefully our mana base will be okay. Almost everything in this deck can tap to cast Boros Reckoner. And I do think the Splashing Red is worth it in this deck. I mean, I'd want to splash Blood Crypts anyway to kind of guarantee we get this Boros Reckoner out. So I might as well go in Heavy Red for the War Leader Helix. And it does give us a little bit of options in the sideboard. Uh, some things that you could go like Rakdos' Return or Slaughter Games. I'm definitely okay with that. In fact, I think I'm going to bring in a Slaughter Games now that I'm thinking about it. I'm just going to bring in a one of Slaughter Games. We're going we're gonna to take out probably another Sin Collector. Maybe maybe I don't need so many ultimate prices. I'm going to take out uh, two more ultimate prices. We're going to bring in two Slaughter Games. Because there is enough. I think there's enough decks out there that Slaughter Games is really good against. Oh, I know what I need. I, I definitely need a Needle in this deck. It works really well with Trading Post. It's something we can sacrifice. So I'm going to bring in a maybe one of or two of Needle. And if that's the case, we need to cut two cards. I'm thinking Assemble the Legions, the two of, is still the right way to go uh, against the, the control matchups. Maybe I'll just go down to one. I'm thinking Erebos, but maybe Erebos isn't the greatest. I, I like to bring Erebos against the Mono Black, but maybe we don't even need it. So I'm going to take out Erebos because there's no way to actually uh, get him active. And I don't think we need a Dark Betrayal either. I'll keep the Glare of Heresy. And I we're gonna we're gonna go down against the mono black list. It's gonna be I think I don't think mono black is gonna be that big of a deal. Again, once mono black is it runs out of steam and against any sort of lifelink deck, once you get like an Angelica Court out, it is a way that well uh, we do have to worry about Erebos. Erebos himself is real is is a real problem, but I think we have plenty of ways to deal with that. And we got the slaughter games to name Erebos if we really needed to. I think these would come in against Model Black. You just name the Grey Merchant and you're good to go. Anyway, um, I'm li I'm liking these wear tears. I might actually think about bringing in more, but we do have High Priest, priest of Penance. Again, Needle is an answer for Underworld Connections. Uh, Needle is also an answer for any one of the Planeswalkers. And I think it just has too much synergy with Trading Post to not include it. In fact, it might even be worthy of main boarding instead of a Hero's Downfall. We'll have to check it out. Again, I'm not expecting this deck to be like revolutionary and just win so many matchups. So I think it's going to be a very, very fun deck, especially if you get like Gift of Immortality hooked up to a High Priest of Penance, which is actually a nice little curve there. Anyway, uh, let's see how this deck works. This is Kevin with Gathering Magic and RogueDeckBuilder.com. Thanks for watching.